February 9th, 2013 farm report. We are standing in what is going to be the spring garden over here to my left. And uh, Hudson and I have been uh, getting 42 rows ready. Hudson, is it 42 per side? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so about 80 rows here of, uh, of crop. And we're going to be doing mostly um, the the greens, uh, beets, carrots, uh, lettuces, things that can tolerate the cold, the kale, uh, really doesn't mind, and there are plenty of uh, seeds. We've got uh, about 50 packs of seeds here we're going to be putting in. And to my right is the winter garden. This has borne food and, and given us nutrition throughout the entire month of January here in Nashville, Tennessee. And um, that's a remarkable thing. Uh, it looks a bit scruffy. It's been beaten down by the, by the cold. But uh, it has not failed to produce every single day. Uh, we've been coming out here and filling a laundry basket full of greens, putting them through the juicer, and, um, and uh, nourishing ourselves with them. And uh, it, it's really been great. Now, that's the first year I've ever done that. Um, I really just st stuck with it. and. Um, and it wasn't quite as cold as it usually is, so that helped. And uh, so this, this whole garden here has just been a, um, a real blessing, uh, a real uh, a first uh, for gardening here for me. And um, over here, behind Sophia, who's filming, we have all the chickens. And uh, we've, we've gotten down to about maybe eight or so. And uh, they're doing their thing in there <clears throat> and uh, being good chickens. And, uh, and they like to watch and they like to eat what we throw over when we throw things over. So they're, uh, they're getting nourished and uh, benefited as well. And so um, over here we have all the animals. Um, these don't belong to me. Um, they belong to uh, another family. And that's a donkey and that's a... Uh, to the left of the donkey is a stinky billy goat named Sam and some baby sheep and uh, some big big sheep and uh, I'll walk you down the garden here and show you what uh, what method we're doing here okay we're doing something different every year I try to get, do something a little better and do a lot of experimentation um, over there through that fence is a large green tractor with a, uh, a five-foot tiller and I tilled all this just to kill the grass and I don't want to do that again. I want to keep this uh, grass free as much as possible um, in the years ahead, but sometimes I lose that battle. And the tiller will just scrape off the first few inches and it basically just kills everything. And then I came in behind and, and, and just broadcasted on the entire thing, kale and collard, and that will compete with the grass. And, um, and then what I did is I used this little tiller right here and uh, we pulled up, we, we did all these rows. Um, Sophia, if you turn behind and show them those rows. And uh, that little tiller will make, uh, make very nice little rows. And, uh, and then we went in behind on, on this first 20 rows here. We went in behind and we, um, we used what's called a broad fork. And the handle broke and we have it in repair right now. And see how deep these are right here? Um, and what we're doing is pulling roots out, and then he's tilling again just to break up the clods. But the, the idea there is that um, we will pull up nutri nutrition from down below. Um, this used to be an old growth forest uh, until the 18, uh, probably 1875, 1850. And these were, there were probably huge trees here, you know, like this big, uh, maybe five foot, four foot diameter. And they were cut down and then agriculture was brought in here probably when the barn was built in 1875. So this has been continually grazed. So that first four inches of soil is probably somewhat depleted. Although I will say that for five feet below me, there is nothing but pure black and brown alluvial topsoil, the finest topsoil you, you can imagine. And it goes down five feet. And I know that because we've dug it with a um, a post hole digger that goes on the end of uh, one of the other tractors and we get down five feet and hit nothing but chocolate um, and so what we're doing uh, Hudson ran the broad fork here and uh, we're bringing up uh, from 12 inches down we're bringing it up and then breaking it up and um, 
and we're going to plant our root vegetables here on these first 20 rows and that's an experiment and then uh, here what we're going to do is um, uh, break these up a little bit more and then we're going to plant them and, uh, and we're going to have everything smooth when we're done that's why we need to have the sticks here and we've uh, numbered each row so that we can um, uh, write down what we're planting and, and, and the company the seed came from and so forth. And um, and let's see, what else would I add? Uh, it's a beautiful day in February and in Boston right now, um, my father's getting a big uh, snowstorm. They're under several feet of snow in Maine and uh, Boston's not much better. Uh, so we're really uh, blessed here to have a nice sunny day. It's about 50 degrees. Uh, I have a sweater on and Hudson just took off his jacket and he's uh, in short sleeves. So you can see it's a very pleasant day to plant. And we're getting it in earlier um, this year because um, we can always replant. And um, what do you have to lose? But you have a lot to gain. And what we'll do is we'll, uh, <clears throat> we'll just plant everything just, uh, and I'll save a lot of the seeds to replant if necessary. And I'm sowing it rather thinly because um, <clears throat> we, um, we're saving seeds and I don't want to have to thin the, the rows later. And also, um, at this time of year, we don't have to worry about weeds, which is really a, a, um, important because weeding is a lot of work and there are a lot of weed seeds in the ground here. And so we're going to be forcing a lot of those weed seeds when the rains come. So um, that's it for now. And uh, Sophia will take you around and show you some of the other sites and we're going to keep uh, planting here. Thank you for watching.